the thing that kind of unites the companies that, that I've started is um, um, was when I was in college, I thought about what would most affect the future of humanity. And the, the three things that I could come up with were uh, the internet, um, the transition to sustainable energy, both the production and consumption of energy in a sustainable manner. Uh, and the third was space exploration, uh, in particular, um, making life multiplanetary. Um, and I did not expect ever to be involved in the space, space uh, side of things. Uh, those were simply what I thought were most important in the abstract. Um, but fortunately, via some capital I was able to acquire from selling some internet companies that allowed me to enter the, the space arena. So, so let's see, so, so the story of Tesla, since this is obviously a clean tech of, of forum, uh, is sort of an interesting one. Um, I initially thought that there wouldn't really be a need for a new company to come in and do electric vehicles because um, if, if people recall, there was the EV1, there was the, the RAV4 EV, and it looked like there was momentum in the direction of electric vehicles. Um, so, oh, well, that's cool. So there's, there's no need for some new entrant to, to enter the game. Um, and then, um, in a remarkable turn of events, uh, GM uh, and Toyota re re recalled the, the vehicles, and GM crushed them uh, in, in, in a lot somewhere. Um, if, if people have seen Who Killed the Electric Car, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I think, well, in retrospect, that was an unwise move for General Motors. Um, and. and you know, if, you, if, you, if you've seen the movie, it's a good movie, Who Killed Electric Car. Um, uh, the, the, the customers that had the EV1 uh, were extremely, I mean, they loved the car. They loved the car to the degree that, that they, they actually tracked down where the, 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 the wrecking yard where GM was going to crush the cars and held a candlelit vigil like it was a capital murder uh, or, or, you know, somebody was put, being put to death. And, um, I think companies ought to take note when customers hold candlelit vigils for their products. <laughs> uh, when I learned that, that there was a small company in Southern California called AC Propulsion that had done a prototype, just a very sort of rough prototype of an electric car uh, um, called the, the T0. Um, I, I got a test drive in the car. It, was, it, it clearly showed that the timing was right to create uh, a compelling electric car. Um, the, the advent of lithium ion really being the key uh, enabling technology. As for, for our internal development, we have the, the Model S, which is, I think, really going to be a great car. Um, our, our goal with the Model S is to make, well, our aspiration is to make the best car on the roads. Um, so it's a car that is um, superlative in almost every dimension, um, and, and, and a car that you would buy even if it wasn't electric. I mean, that, that's the, I think that's a very important distinction. You, you want people to buy the car, not you, you don't want people to have to accept a bunch of negative things in order to be environmental. Um, you want to create the best product, and such that even if somebody doesn't care about the environment, that they would still buy it. And that's really our goal with, with the Model S. Um, and I, I feel very confident that, um, that we'll continue to make uh, great cars and, and continue to add, add to the, the innovation with each successive model. Um, at, at the end of this year, we'll be unveiling our, our Model X, which is um, kind of an SUV. Um, but our goal will be to make something that is cooler than any SUV but uh, has more functionality than any minivan. So that, that would be a tricky thing, but I think we've got a, a shot at doing that. You know, I think t Tesla is, a, is a, an American car company you can, you can sort of refer to, uh, I think we'll think of as, um, hey, this is, this is a car company that you can really be proud of, you know, as an American. Um, just, just as we're, we're very proud of, you know, the, the Apples and Googles and, and whatnot, Intel, Cisco, um, this, this is a car company where, uh, for the first time in a long time, the United States is the leader in automotive technology. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's just interesting to note that you've got Daimler, the company that invented the, in, the internal combustion engine car, that's coming to Tesla um, and um, having us supply them with 
um, electric powered train components, you've got Toyota, the largest car company in the world, and the leader in hybrids, also coming to Tesla to supply them with, with electric power train. Um, I think people would have had a hard time imagining that such a thing would occur uh, several years ago. What advice would you give to an entrepreneur and also to investors, you know, how you approach creating value and, and being successful? What, what does it take and what would you advise? Um, well, I think it's important to um, have a, a very, um, to, to apply critical thinking to, this may sound trite, but to apply critical, critical thinking to what, what one is doing. Um, and um, by, by that I mean just um, the fundamentals of logic, you know, of, of um, do you have the right axioms, um, are they relevant, and are you making the right conclusions based on those, on those axioms? That, that's the essence of critical thinking, and yet it is amazing how often people fail to do that. Um, w I think wishful thinking is uh, innate uh, in the human brain. Um, you, you, you want things to be the way you, you, you wish them to be, and so you tend to filter uh, information that you shouldn't filter. Um, that's the most common flaw that I see. Um, and then I also tend to see uh, that, that people, instead of um, reasoning from first principles, they, tend, they will tend to uh, act in a manner, uh, they, they will they'll do things because others are doing them, because there is a trend, or, or, or you know, they just see everyone going in that direction, so they think that must be a good direction to go, um, which, which is sometimes correct, but then sometimes you know, you're, you're going to run off a cliff or something. Um, so it, it's much better to, to really look at things from, you know, as more would say in physics, from a first principle standpoint. What, what are the fundamental truths, or the most fundamental truths in an arena, and uh, what, what can you, any conclusions logic that you come to must be derived from those fundamental truths. Actually, that's where physics is really helpful, um, except in unexplored areas of physics, uh, or difficult to explore. Is Physics is very helpful for, for figuring out whether you're violating one of the, say, the, the fundamental laws, like uh, are you conserving momentum and energy? If you're not, then you probably are not going to be successful. Um, uh, or if you think you're not. <laughs> um, I think one thing, try to get to a, use, a useful prototype as soon as possible with the least amount of money. I think that's, a, that's usually a good idea. Um, you know, everything works on PowerPoint, um, and so people are somewhat skeptical if they see a PowerPoint presentation or a website or something, but if they see the actual hardware and it's working, um, that is much, much more convincing. Um, that's why the, the first thing we did with Tesla was to create um, uh, a, a prototype Roadster. That was the first order of business, um, to show people that it was real and it actually did work. Um, and even though it was somewhat of a hack, um, it, was, uh, it still gave people the, 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 the feeling of what, what it could be. Um, so I think generally that, that's a good move. Um, it also will help identify if what you're trying to do is uh, impossible or, or extremely difficult or something like that. I, I, think, I think it's important to um, allow for a certain amount of chaos in an organization. Um, if you try to impose too much structure um, or if you, um, if you don't allow failure, you know, if, if, if there's, if, a, lot, a lot of co companies, particularly as they get bigger, tend to have a risk-reward asymmetry. Um, failure is, is severely punished. Success is moderately rewarded. Um, that's not a good. Then that's not a good idea if you want to, to be innovative, because by, by its very nature, innovation um, will result in um, many attempts that don't work. Um, persistence is extremely important. Um, you, you should not give up if there is, if there's, unless you're forced to give up. You know, unless there's no no other choice. Um, uh, now, now that, 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 that principle can be misapplied um, if you happen to be trying to um, penetrate a brick wall with your head. Uh, you know, so, so you have to be cautious in, in, in always saying one should always persist and never give up because there actually are times when you should give up um, because you're, you're doing something in error. But if you're convinced that what you're doing is correct, then you should never give up. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying about starting companies, which I think is, is true. Um, 
you know, uh, starting companies is like eating glass and staring into the abyss of death. Um, if that sounds appealing, be an entrepreneur. <laughs>In 2020, I think it's going to be, geez, it's going to be really just dirt cheap to have a long-range battery. Um, and um, I mean, I think all transportation is actually going to go electric. Planes, trains, automobiles, everything, with, with ironically one exception being rockets. Um, and unfortunately, you just, there's no way to avoid Newton's third law, and you need to, you need to expel um, High, uh, high pressure gas at high velocity in order to escape Earth's gravity. Um, but apart from that, everything is going to be pure electric. N not hybrid, pure electric. Um, a prediction that I've been making for a while is that, um, and, and these, I feel very comfortable in making these predictions, because so, I think it will actually will occur sooner. That's why I've actually been willing to take, if, if somebody wants to, to bet me on this, I'm happy to bet them, <laughs> um, which is that, um, by 2030, a majority of all, all new cars manufactured um, in the United States will be pure electric. Uh, so you know, just under 20 years. Um, and 20 years after that, so by mid-century, um, the vast majority of cars on the road will be pure electric. Um, you know, it'll take a, it it takes, always takes time to replace the install base and the legacy, legacy products. but. That, that's what I expect. Um, and the, the, the fundamental good that I hope Tesla, um, people will look back and say that Tesla achieved was that Tesla served as a catalyst to accelerate that transition. Now, as we get to you know, the point where we've got half of all the cars on the road or more being electric, there's certainly going to be a need for grid upgrades, um, charging stations, and an increasing need for that. Um, but it's not something that I think is very pressing in, say, the next year or two. Um, uh, but, if, if, but, but Tesla, and we do recognize that as an important long-term thing, and we, we are developing a, a high-speed charger, uh, which is capable of recharging the battery pack in about 40 minutes or so. Um, and um, we're going we're gonna to offer that for free to our customers. So we're going to just pick uh, locations along the major interstates every 100 miles or so um, where there's a decent amount of traffic and just install them for free. Um, if they start to see significant usage, then we might put a card reader on them or something. Um, but um, uh, that, that, I do think that's an important thing to address, uh, so we're going to address it. And we're also happy to sell the, those fast charges to others if they want to install them in, in, in places. Um, <clears throat> The other thing we've done with the Model S is we've designed the battery pack such that it can be swapped out in under a minute. So it's in the floor pan of the car. Um, I'm not sure how many people will actually make use of that, but we wanted to have it in there just to preserve the optionality. Um, worst case, it's, it makes it very easy to service, very easy to install the pack in, in the factory and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, between those, Essentially, those two things, plus offering a 300-mile range car, I think we've uh, gone a long way towards addressing people's range concerns. But, but I think overall, uh, for the 21st century, the biggest single problem that humanity faces is sustainable production and consumption of energy. And, and, and there's so much, I mean, that's such a huge problem that, that there's, there's so much that can be done in, in that arena that, um, uh, I mean, it's really more than enough to absorb I think any number of s startups uh, and, uh, and and companies, because it's such a tough problem and it's such a big problem. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, it, it's um, th th there's so many uses of energy that that need to be sustainable. I mean, Tesla's working on cars, but there's boats, there's planes, there's um, uh, you know all, all sorts of other m mobile transport things, and then production of energy. Um, is also going to be a tough one. Uh, we obviously uh, can't keep using hydrocarbons uh, to generate electricity. That's not sustainable. Um, uh, whatever one may think about the uh, climate debate, um, I think it's probably not a good idea to run the experiment of seeing how much CO2 the atmosphere can hold. Uh, because even if it's 99% likely to be okay, that's you know, still not good. <laughs>